Well, good day everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve and welcome to the results from typing assignment number five. I think all of you had a great time. I sure did working on this uh, theme, which was, it was a dark and stormy night, that old chestnut. And I remember when I was a kid seeing this, maybe the first time I'd seen this was in a Peanuts comic strip. That was from years ago, back in the 1960s. This, this uh, Charles Schultz had done this. I thought it was pretty cool. Well, um, we had a great time. I thought the week and a half that I allowed for the entries uh, worked pretty good. It looked like a few more people were able to get their entries in because of that uh, greater time permitting people to get, get something written down. And so, uh, without any further ado, let's cut to the slideshow of all the results and then I'll talk about them afterwards.
Now, as it turns out, this phrase, it was a dark and stormy night, does have an origin. And according to Wikipedia, if you can believe that as an authoritative source, it was first penned as the start of a novel by English novelist Edward Bulwer-Lytton in his 1830 novel, Paul Clifford. What a great uh, set of uh, work that was submitted this time. Um, I noticed some interesting uh, commonalities with a lot of the pieces, which I'll get into here in a little bit. But let's start at the very top. I'm going to start with uh, Ted Monk's piece called It Was a Dark and Stormy Night, and he typed it on a Webster XL 747. Um, this was real fun. Ted's piece was really great. It's kind of a sci-fi detective um, kind of piece. Uh, it involves portals and banders and electric eels. And I love um, the well-crafted uh, piece that it was really brief, but I mean is it was well put together and used language very efficiently. There was a lot of detail in a short period, short amount of space. He did really well. And I like the line he says at, at the end, hopefully, it would be eels and not banders. <laughs> so that was great, Ted. Good job. Okay, John's piece uh, was uh, written on a 1935 Smith Corona standard, which he names Stan, which is cool. And it's, of course, The Dark and Stormy Night. Um, and I love the idea that he doesn't actually use the phrase, it was a dark and stormy night, in the piece. Rather, the, the scene is set within the dark and stormy night. Um, I liked the opening because it could have gone any which way. It started out sounding like it could have been a mystery. It could have been a horror thing or macabre. Uh, but when you come up to that big mansion, I like that I am left with a sense of curiosity about the characters. I kind of want to know more about those people in the house and what they're up to. and. I like this idea that when I was left after reading this story, I have this sense that this is a genre of fiction that you might call typewriter fiction. It, it, it's a work of fiction that involves typewriters, so maybe there's a whole subgenre that we just discovered. But really good job, John. David Randall's piece uh, was typed on a coal steel typewriter and is very imaginative. Um, it's, there's a sense of dreamlike or time travel in this because it starts out as Sir Francis Drake on the Golden Hind in a storm. And it's a very historical beginning and a lot of surprise at the end. You know, I wonder now, because it ends up in a modern contemporary rowing boat type of situation, I wonder if the author, if David himself has had experience rowing, and do these kinds of story-like thoughts go through your head when you're rowing? Because I know exercising is a, is a, a time where you can uh, do a lot of inter good thinking when that happens. So anyways, I really love David's piece. Well done. Andy Kev's uh, piece was typed on a 1951 Smith Corona Silent, and I really like the, uh, the details of the police life, the, the police force on shift. And I really like the idea that bad weather brings a pleasant surprise, which for them was a quiet shift, uh, no drama. So a dark and stormy night brings peace and calm. That was really cool. Very well written, Andy. David Cornelius' piece, Dust Bowl, written on a 1929 Remington III. I love this for a lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, the Ernie Pyle quote at the beginning of the piece. Ernie Pyle lived here in my hometown of Albuquerque. He was a World War II, famed World War II, Depression-era uh, journalist. And it's a, David's piece is a sad, somber glimpse into the Dust Bowl days. And it's a wonderfully powerful vignette. And you wonder, after reading it, you wonder how those people survived. But really well done, David. Andrew Nichols' piece, The Lady of the Lake, was written on a 1950s era Hermes baby rocket. And it's really interesting. I loved Andrew's uh, piece because it starts out as this kind of intimate nature scene with Lucy walking her dog, Max, down by the lake. And we're surprised with the dead body at the end. And I'm left with questions. And anytime I'm left with questions after reading a piece, 
that's a it's a good piece of writing. That's what good writing should do is leave you with more questions. I wonder if Lucy gets caught up in the investigation because she has this watch that belonged to the dead girl. I wonder what happened to the dead girl, the Lady of the Lake. And I wonder if Lucy herself is in some danger. There's a little bit of foreboding at the end. You know, that there's a parallel between the Lady of the Lake and Lucy herself. Could Lucy become another Lady of the Lake? We don't know that, but it's a very good piece, Andrew. I liked it. Uh, Diane Cox's piece, Let the Good Times Roll, uh, written on a Hermes 3000. Uh, this was um, kind of a southern gothic macabre maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit supernatural. Um, I love the setting of the old mansion because it reminds me so much of the Winchester Mystery House out in San Jose, California with all the the rooms and corridors going off to nowhere in order to make the ghosts go away. I like the appearance of typewriters and old cameras in the piece. Very cool. And there's sort of a hint of the occult and a little bit of time travel, I think, in there. It's spooky yet fun. And I really liked what Diane did with putting the image of the lady, of the girl, in the background of the typewritten piece. I thought that was very creative. Well done. Uh, Darren Sundstrom's uh, piece, typed on a Smith Corona Silent Super, um, it's a poem and it's really powerful and I see a lot of Lovecraft, H.P. Lovecraft kind of in this piece. There's some uh, personal spiritual discovery going on in this and uh, about life and about the world and I love the first stanza to this, to this piece. It was a dark and stormy night when I first beheld the true face of the world, when I first caught a brief flash of the violence of the world written under it all. So there's kind of a personal discovery in this piece, discovering what the world is about, the, the less than uh, beautiful underside perhaps, but very powerful poem, I really loved it. John Campbell's piece was written on a 1920s Underwood three bank portable, and it's a, a personal recollection of searching online for an appropriate lens that he can use in his homemade 8x10 box camera, which he calls the Frankenbeast. And he does some internet searching on some keywords and comes across an article written by me <laughs> about using uh, Plano convex uh, meniscus lenses in cameras. And so uh, that was very cool. Kind of a little dis rediscovery of an old uh, article that I wrote. So he says that the camera he made is still in use today. That's very neat, John. I really enjoyed that. That meant a lot to me. Thank you. And John Monroe's piece, uh, which is Twer Dark and Starmy, is written on a 1955 Underwood Deluxe Quiet Tab named Julep. It's always good to name your typewriters. And so this is a funny tale of a Canadian family's camping trips. And it's kind of told as a recollection from the perspective of when the kid was young and all the misery that children might experience from these kinds of trips that the adults don't necessarily understand. Um, now, this is a, a, a structure in here, this kind of a circular structure that I noticed in more than one of these pieces, which is very interesting. But I love the circular structure where at the beginning it's kind of a leprechaun sitting around the fire telling a story, and it ends with, in the story, the father, in a leprechaun's voice, starts to tell the same story all over again. So it's a circular kind of a thing. Uh, and that reoccurs on a number of these pieces, that circular structure, which is very interesting. And now also the, the, humor, the humorous side of this, of this story reminds me of one of those Chevy Chase films uh, about going on vacation. And very much, there's a lot of that in there. Very well done, John, thanks. Now Don N, his piece is very humorous and it's two voices. There's a the voice of the writer and the voice of the editor or critic. And it starts out with the origins of this phrase, it was a dark and stormy night, except the phrase is way too long and too poorly written. And both of them, iteratively, both the writer and the critic, 
end up working, paring it down to the essence of the phrase as we know it today. And I really love that because rather than it being representative of a failed phrase, but it, it ends up being a success, right? It's a good thing. They edited down the, the long phrase into what we know it as today. Very good. So then Cameron Wright's piece was written on an Olympia SM3. And this is a deep and insightful glimpse into the inner turmoil uh, and self-doubt of the writer and the writing process. And he uses this metaphor of the window in the writing writer's room. And he opens the window. The writer in this story opens the window, lets in the air, and even lets in the storm, and lets the thunder strike down the criticism and self-doubt. So the storm coming in through the window kind of brings this refreshing and it breaks the log jam of the, of the self-doubt and the writer's block. It's just a wonderful metaphor this piece was to the writing life. And I also like the way he staged uh, the photograph of his typewritten piece on his desk. There's a hint of his typewriter in the corner of the picture and of course his pen right there. So that was very cool. Very well done, Cameron. S.B. Bohanga's piece, It Was a Dark and Stormy Night, was written on a 1959 Smith Corona Galaxy 2. And it was interesting. It was typed on onion skin paper. I really love the look of it. You can see the texture. You can, see, you can almost sense how thin that is just from looking at the photograph. The storm in his piece is not a physical meteorological storm, but it's the inner emotion of relational conflict between him and his partner. And what's wonderful about this story is that there's resolution is brought due to forgiveness or through forgiveness. The storm is calmed and it brings the antithesis of a dark and stormy night, which is, as he says, tomorrow would be a bright and clear day. Wow, that's wonderful. And he also says, my typewriter had seen the storm and warned me. Now, this is a great lesson. We should all listen to our typewriters more often. They might tell us something. That was wonderful. Now, in keeping with this circular motif going on in a lot of these pieces, the next piece is S.B. Bohanga's brother, Pat, who typed his piece on an Olympia SM9. And this is a biographical tale of how the Olympia SM9 that he typed it on, which belongs to his brother SB, uh, was got caught in a basement that got flooded and it, the typewriter almost got damaged by that very same storm of the dark and stormy night, uh, but was rescued nonetheless. And uh, so there's this interesting little circular parallel going on between Pat and his brother. And then it's also, this piece is really nice because it has these intimate glimpses into the family life, life of a family, parents with kids and just uh, dealing with that. And it's sweet and touching at the same time. So very good, Pat, I liked it. Okay, Michael Kitchen's piece, Show, Don't Tell, was very fun. It was typed on a 1961 Smith Corona Coronet Automatic with that power return button. And this is a sweet, humorous dialogue between a writer and his lover. And as a writer, he tries to embellish the truth of how they met with the craft of writing and exaggeration. But she catches him on it and she says, so to tell a truth, you begin with a lie? I love that. I mean, that's the conflict of the writer right there. And she says, I want to feel it, not hear it. And it gets into their physical love. And it's a wonderful piece. You know, it, it touches on the detachment of the writer as a creative, caught up in that inner struggle of creativity. And then the frustration of the writer's life partner having to draw them out of that and become, get back into the real world. And uh, so it was, it was a very, very good piece, a lot of metaphor in that. So I really enjoyed it, Mike. Richard Wood's piece, A Dark and Stormy Night, was typed on a, written on a 1970s Hermes 3000. This is a spooky, horror-filled piece at night in the woods. And it seem, it involves demons, you know, fanged and clawed demons, and seems to end in violence. But it's revealed to be to have been nothing but a bad dream while camping out in the woods. 
Or was it? And as Brad begins to retell his dream, the story starts over. And there again, there's that circular thing starting over. More than one of you guys did that. Very cool. So there's a lot of foreboding in that, and it's very, it was clever and fun. Very well done, Richard. I loved it. David Wells' piece, Chloe in the Storm, uh, written on a 1920s Remington Portable. This is uh, a wonderful tale that we, I think we can relate to of uh, a, a girl, a young lady, going on a, a stay in the cabin with, at the lake with her grandpa, being forced to deal with no cell phone service and intermittent electricity at the cabin, and being a bored youngster in that situation, all of a sudden discovering a typewriter. And it, it ends with, with a smile, Chloe began to type. It was a dark and stormy night. And we can definitely wish, as typewriter aficionados, that all of the young people that we know in our lives would discover typewriters to as a source of cure for their boredom. Wouldn't that be great? Well done, David. Michael Rasmussen's piece, Exercises in Character and Scene, to, uh, written on a 1967 Hermes 3000. This was probably the most complex piece. It's very well written. And this references the French author Raymond Quineau's, um Exercises in Style. And it's more, though, than just a, a reiteration of the same uh, idea in, in different story vignettes, but it really kind of tells a story all together. It's not just a repetition, but put together they tell a story of various lives lived again, maybe reincarnation. And there's a lot of question it raises. Is the quino in this story, is it an elixir or a poison? There's a little bit of elements of both, good and bad. Just like in Quineau's work, was it an elixir or poison? So this retelling of the same story, is it merely an exercise? And that's the mystery of it. And that's what I love about it. And uh, very well done. I loved it, Michael. Diane Mayer's piece, Worst Week Ever, uh, written on a 1930 Underwood number no. 5. This was uh, sad, dramatic, biographical, and it was very well told. And we, as the, as the reader, you can feel her pain and shock, even eight years later. I feel so much empathy for her as the writer, expressing this dire time in her life through the power of writing, and that really does reveal how good of a writer she is. And she says that week was truly a dark and stormy night. Sometimes the dark and stormy nights are not uh, physical, but they are a period of time in our lives. And she, Diane, expresses this very powerfully through her piece. Very well done. And Michael Gerloff's piece, It Was a Dark and Stormy Night, was written on a 1980s Robotron cella. And this is about the life of a struggling writer and teacher and a, lit a lover of literature. And it's kind of melancholy and sad not being able to find a profession in literature, but having to uh, struggle with uh, being a, a, a reader of a deluge of poorly written uh, works to the publishers of ebooks. And there's a lot of uh, in interesting uh, implications here in this about where modern books are today. And it's interesting also that it references. Bulwer Lighton's Paul Clifford novel, which is was where the Dark and Stormy Night uh, started from, right? That we mentioned earlier. So, that, again, that's another circular thing in this whole thing. But very well done, Michael. I enjoyed your piece. And Kevin Kittle submitted his piece, Lieutenant Brown's Report, on a 1936 Underwood Six, and this was humorous. This started off as what appeared to be a detailed. Uh, account, a combat report of pilot Lieutenant Brown written from the perspective of a World War I pilot of a Sopwith Camel airplane recounting his night of combat. And in the end of the narrative, though, we find out that Lieutenant Brown jumped on top of his doghouse to type up the combats in the air report. 
And yes, Lieutenant Brown turns out to be Snoopy, Charlie Brown's dog, as evidenced by his signature paw print on the bottom of the form. So, <laughs> so fun. And again, there's that circular motif because I mentioned uh, early on in this video about Charlie Brown and, uh, and Snoopy uh, typing this very... Uh, line on top of his doghouse and when I used to read those comics back in the 1960s so great job Kevin I loved it and I liked your detail about the uh, the World War One aircraft it was very well done thank you John Bailey's piece was written on a Royal Futura 800 a new typewriter to him and a new ribbon and it's about a father and his kids riding out a bad storm at home when intruders show up on the front porch and appear to be up to no good and at the heightened climax of the story he has to decide to get his gun apparently so kind of a very dramatic story very cool and you get the sense that boy I sure would like to see the end of this story in the second or third page so well done John I appreciate it thank you and then finally there was the piece that I wrote uh, dark and stormy night that's uh, true to life uh, happened in uh, the spring of 1979. Um, I was in the Navy um, stationed on the U.S. aircraft carrier USS Constellation. We were in port in the Philippines and around the Christmas and New Year's of 78. We were supposed to be there for 10 days or two weeks and then the U.S. ally in uh, Iran, the Shah, got overthrown and they sent us out to the Indian Ocean and the Arabian Sea and just a, a little biographical piece about what it's like being sent out on deployment in an aircraft carrier. That was my dark and stormy night and collision with another ship at two o'clock in the morning. So that was my piece. I loved everybody's pieces. They were so good. And again, there's this circular kind of um, story structure that occurred on more than one of these pieces that I find very fascinating and interesting that a lot of you guys came up with the same kind of structure. Well done. Well, that was fun. Uh, number five, that was really great. And we're going to have another assignment I'll be issuing in the next several days. And I believe we'll do the same thing timing wise. We'll give it about a week and a half for you guys to get it done. So look forward in the next day or so for, for the, uh, submission for assignment number six. Well done guys. It was really a lot of fun reading your pieces and uh, a lot of strong writing there. Until next time, this is Joe Van Cleve and you have yourselves a great day.